Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Carloop, data to empower Australia's EV revolution. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. The Tesla Powerwall 3 is now officially launched here in Australia, and I was actually invited to the launch last uh, week in Sydney. However, uh, due to work commitments, uh, got to pay the bills, right? And somehow find the money to actually buy one of these products, I couldn't make the event. But uh, thanks to Niraf Bhatt, uh, one of the very good freelance journalists in Australia reporting on EVs and renewable energy. Uh, he actually posted a video of the presentation, which I'll leave a link in the video description below, and also wrote a good piece for uh, solarquotes.com.au as well. So I'm going to use his article uh, as reference to walk you through uh, whether it's worth upgrading to a Powerwall 3 in Australia today. So for a bit of background, I've actually got a Powerwall 2, as you can see, installed behind me there. I've had that since 2016, so eight years down the track, and I've been very happy with it. Posted numerous videos about the Powerwall 2 itself, justifying its cost, its payback, uh, and also how it works in a three-phase situation like it is uh, in my home currently. Uh, through the magic of net metering, I've been uh, able to utilize the Powerwall 2 very well. Of course, it's not a true three-phase device. It doesn't provide three-phase backup. And the question today posed to the new Powerwall 3 unit is whether it is actually a true three-phase device and whether it can provide three-phase backup. Of course, uh, we'll get through to that question very shortly. But I want to also run through all the specs, of course, of the Powerwall 3. Now, of course, a greater question surrounds whether it's actually worth buying a battery at all for your home. And of course, if you have solar already on your household, congratulations, you're probably reaping the benefits of a lower power bill. And of course, if you have a solar and battery solution already, like my place, you'll find that most of the savings are actually from solar itself, with the remainder of the savings made up from the battery. So with feed-in tariffs decreasing in Australia, which of course simple economics will dictate because if more people get solar, then electricity providers will be less likely to give you a higher feed-in tariff. For example, mine is now five cents per kilowatt hour uh, from origin, and it's not dissimilar to uh, other providers as well in Australia. Then the question arises as to whether it's worth buying a battery. That's probably a topic for a whole new video, but in today's video, we're just gonna focus very much on the Powerwall 3 specs itself, and I might talk about the economics of uh, ownership of that uh, moving forward in a separate video. But to be honest with you, as you'll find out when I go through the specs of the Powerwall 3, it's actually not that dissimilar, apart from the amount of power that can be output from the new battery compared to Powerwall 2. So a lot of my old videos still uh, hold up today. So check those out as well in that playlist. Okay, enough of a preamble. Let's go through Nirav's article in solarquotes.com.au. So there it is. Uh, the first shot is of a Powerwall 3 dunked in, uh, I guess, a fish tank uh, in some water showing that it can actually uh, stand up to Australia's harsh climate, including flood. Now I've read around this and I know that the Powerwall 3 can uh, be resistant up to two feet of water. So that's about 60 centimeters in the metric scale. So just in case you're wondering. Then Nirav goes on to say that the Powerwall 3 is now LFP cells, so lithium iron phosphate, whereas the Powerwall 2 behind me is uh, 2170 NMC chemistry cells. So lots of benefits of LFP, of course. Uh, the fact that there's no cobalt, so less rare minerals, so therefore less subject to exploitation, like for example, child labor around the world and being more stable at higher voltages it can withstand being charged to 100% more frequently. So therefore being more conducive to a home battery solution like this, like a power wall, that will regularly be charged to 100% on most days. In fact, you can't actually set a maximum limit on the power wall two currently. So we'll see what it's like in the power wall three. So good to see LFP batteries and also arguably safer from a, I guess, fire safety point of view as well. There's also a preheat mode, which is like a, I guess, preconditioning. If you have ever owned a Tesla or some other EVs, uh, then you'll know that you can actually precondition a battery before rocking up to a Tesla supercharger or fast charger, and therefore heating up the battery to its ideal temperature. Great for those cold mornings. Not so much in Australia, uh, particularly on the East Coast, but uh, good for uh, climates around the world. So now the Powerwall 3 will have a built-in solar inverter, which is great, supporting up to 20 kilowatts of DC solar per Powerwall 3. This is fantastic because if you don't have any solar at all in your home, you're thinking of installing solar and battery, then you can actually save possibly a bit of money from a third-party inverter, knowing there is a built-in solar inverter inside uh, the Powerwall 3, supporting up to 20 kilowatts. That's quite a big solar system. Uh, Built-in uh, MPPT tracker, now this acronym stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking. Essentially it's finding the sweet spot uh, for maximum solar production. Uh, it gets quite technical from here, but yeah, it's, it's a good thing. Um, 
having that in the Powerwall 3, up to 11.04 kilowatt discharge rate, up from the five kilowatts in Powerwall 2. Now this is a huge benefit. So currently my battery maximum is five kilowatt AC production. Uh, so for example, if you're charging an EV that can support 11 kilowatts, for example, Tesla Model 3, Model Y, uh, only five kilowatts of that will come from the battery, or you can dial down your car's charge rate. But now that the new Powerwall 3 has got 11 kilowatt discharge, that's great. So you can actually utilize the uh, full charge rate of a Tesla Model 3 Model Y with the new Powerwall 3's discharge rate of 11 kilowatts. Also good for other power hungry appliances around your home like uh, air conditioning, things like that. Also there's an integrated DC isolator, faster insulation uh, and returnable reusable packaging. Not so much an issue for us consumers, but great for installers. Uh, in the presentation that Nero have recorded, the guys on stage showed a picture of a Tesla purpose-built Powerwall 3 trolley. So, uh, you know, they've really thought of the end-to-end -end installation to consumer uh, cycle, uh, so which is good. And reusable packaging as well, so yeah, that's good to see. And because there's a built-in DC solar inverter inside the battery, uh, then they're claiming uh, better round trip efficiency of 97.5% as opposed to having to go from a, a third-party DC inverter in, back into an AC coupled power wall too. So you lose a bit of um, juice that way. And they're claiming now solar to battery to home grid efficiency of 89% overall. Okay, so LFP batteries doesn't mean it's cheaper. Um, it's probably going to be a little bit more expensive actually. And I took some notes from the presentation, which I think Niraf writes about in the article as well. But RRP will be up from $12,100 for the Powerwall 2. Uh, and now it's $13,600 in Australia, including the Gateway 2 as well. This is excluding installation. So $13,600 for both Powerwall 3 and uh, Gateway 2. There's also a 10 year warranty for both parts and labor as well. Okay, so the capacity of the Powerwall 3 is still 13.5 kilowatt hours. That hasn't changed from Powerwall 2. So overall, reduced external wiring, improved efficiency, improved aesthetics, reducing the cost for installers and resulting in faster installations on site. And there is a picture of the inside of the Powerwall 3 right there. Okay, so just a few more points I took from the presentation. So for example, now the Powerwall 3 can support a 20 kilowatt solar system. You can actually send 10 kilowatts to the home and five kilowatts charging the battery at the same time. Presumably this is a benefit for um, uh, single phase installations. Of course, like I said, I've got a three phase installation for my Powerwall 2 already. So due to the beauty of net metering, that wasn't so much an issue for me. Um, any extra will go back to the grid as well. Whereas for uh, single phase installations, the um, AC coupling was limited to five kilowatts. Now there's a 20 kilowatt built-in solar inverter inside as well, which is great. And some of the aesthetics as well of the uh, Powerwall 3, there's a glass cover, very much like the uh, Gen 3 uh, wall connector for Tesla vehicles. It's a cast aluminum shell uh, rated from minus 20 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. And the preconditioning for the heat mode is based on historical data from the last seven days as well. There's also a new air intake screen apparently for uh, bugs, which is great for Australian environments, of course, lots of bugs in Australia. Okay, so let's go through some of the Q&A that was asked in the uh, launch, which I didn't get to attend, but luckily Nirav uh, documented these. So, yep, costs we've gone through already. Here we go, $13,600 in Australia, including the Gateway 2. Uh, Powerwall 3 expansions. Okay, so can the Powerwall 3s be stacked? That's what this energy expansion is. Uh, that'll be coming in 2025, but at the moment you can actually buy four Powerwall 3s in parallel. So four times uh, 10 kilowatt output for each one is 40 kilowatts of inverter capacity back to the house, which is huge, a lot of power. 54 kilowatt hours, uh, which is four times 13.5 each. 54 is a lot of storage. That's almost an EV really. Um, up to 80 kilowatts of solar supported. So that's a huge solar array. Um, and then you can stack these once the energy expansion comes to market. So you can have four per uh, stack or energy expansion, four in parallel. So that's 16 Powerwall 3s potentially uh, if you need that much energy. So yeah, uh, great modularity right there. There's a picture of it stacking like that. So a question about the Powerwall 2, will it be discontinued? Uh, can you uh, use the Powerwall 3 as a slave? So basically, is it compatible with Powerwall 2? Uh, so Powerwall 3 will now become the new Tesla de facto storage solution. And uh, yeah, Powerwall 2 owners are encouraged to speak to installers, fair enough. Is Powerwall 3 compatible with Powerwall 2 and existing solar? So it says here, Powerwall 3 is not currently compatible with Powerwall 2. So I couldn't stack it with this. Customers with existing solar systems, Powerwall 3 can be AC coupled. So that's good, it's got a built-in third-party AC coupling anyway, like the Powerwall 2 and is compatible with all solar inverters. So that's good news. If you've got an existing solar system already, does Powerwall 3 support bi-directional charging with an EV, for example? No, it does not. Uh, does Tesla support Powerwall 3 for off-grid? 
Um, it's got a grid forming inverter and can provide backup protection for extended period in grid tiered applications. So off grid applications may be supported in the future. That's what they said about Powerwall 2 as well. Next important question is when is native three phase support available? Now this is really important. Powerwall 3 can support loads on multi-phase sites through net metering. So I've already talked about this net metering, which is what I'm doing currently for my Powerwall 2 in my three phase environment with backup on single phase. Okay, so important note, Powerwall 3 does not support true three phase backup. So that's my uh, question I wanted to answer uh, at the start of this video. No three phase backup for Powerwall 3. So essentially, uh, it sounds like Powerwall 3 uh, is very similar in its mechanics to Powerwall 2, except for the fact that it's got a built-in solar inverter, which is great if you're starting from scratch. And secondly, it's got a greater output as well of 10 kilowatts. So that's a good thing. But in terms of three phase uh, power, it does not actually provide that natively and there's no three phase backup either. So. I think that's what a lot of people wanted to know because there's a lot of three phase uh, homes in Australia currently, but still a very good single phase uh, backup battery. Okay, so they're kind of the main points for Powerwall 3 that Nirov has kindly answered for me in his video as well as in the uh, article and Q&A section. Uh, like I said, uh, I've gone through a lot of the Powerwall 2 mechanics and the economics of owning a battery already in my previous videos. So check those out. A lot of them will still be applicable to the Powerwall 3 and batteries in general but uh, great to see that Powerwall 3 is now in Australia. The question for me now is, will I upgrade to Powerwall 3? I don't know, I think this is still going pretty strong, I must say, um, and even though it's still limited to five kilowatt output, it doesn't bother me too much because my solar array is only eight kilowatts, um, and I guess the only limitation would be EV charging, limiting it to only to five kilowatts uh, output, but then again, having only one battery, even if I had an 11 kilowatt output, like I would for the Powerwall 3, it would just drain faster. Rather than draining over two hours, it would drain over one hour, for example. So yeah, um, I'll have to think twice about whether I want to upgrade to Powerwall 3, given that my two is still working pretty well. It hasn't experienced that much battery degradation. Probably you should do a video about that as well. And uh, I've only got an eight kilowatt solar array, like I said, if I was to add another battery, then possibly I'd have to add more solar as well. So again, have to juggle the economics of whether it's worth doing that for my current home. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, I may do a follow-up video if I decide to go ahead with a Powerwall 3 purchase. Let us know in your comments whether you will be adding a battery to your solar system or whether you're thinking of adding a whole system, solar and battery, now that Powerwall 3 is now available. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Thanks again to Nero for providing that video and excellent article from Solar Quotes. I'll leave links to the video and the article in my video description below, as always. Thanks so much. Until next time, happy charging.